Matt Arnfield thinks that his authentic fish and chips have earned him a spot on a Food Network special called Pub Grub. This is Pub Grub at its best. He's fallen for our cover story, Hook, Line, and Sinker. And now he's at the Salt and Battery Kitchen showing our cameras his award-winning fish and chips recipe. I'm no expert at fish and chips, so I'm off to the Food Network test kitchens to step up my game. We have uh, my trusty assistants. Everybody knows Stephanie. <laughs> and Miriam, the chatterer. <laughs> Let's talk about what's important about fish and chips. Well, obviously, you need the quality of fish has to be good. Right. And we don't want a strong flavored fish. That's why cod's a good thing. We use the cod because it's nice and light, flaky, a nice white meat inside, and it contrasts well with the yellow batter. You need a good batter. This is the most important thing in fish and chips. My strategy is to make a classic beer battered fish and chips. Instead of beer, we use seltzer water, because that gives it a little bit of extra fluffiness there. Nice and light. That goes in there. So some beer. Wait a minute, are you measuring? No. OK, well, you should. No, I'm just going to do it by eye. I really wish it was measured, but... Why? This is all pre-measured. Regular, all-purpose flour. The quantities that we use are part of our secret batter mix. So that is the thing that we can't tell you. Anytime you're making a batter, you need precise measurements. You guys are so right about this. Batter's more like baking. I mean, it's more exact, no, it's not. I think, in terms of, it's of not. the balance. It's not. It's not like baking. It is like baking. No, it's but... not. Send your resumes to Throwdown. The whole idea of the batter is to keep it light and fluffy, and you need a big old machine like this to keep it fluffy. So we're going to fold in the egg whites. To keep my batter light and fluffy, I'm folding in whisked egg whites to beer and flour. And I'm adding the yolks for a golden color. So we have a little bit of food coloring. That just goes in there, just to give it a nice golden color when it's finished. How's that look? Okay. Well, it looks nice, like it'll coat. So this is uh, the consistency that we want for our batter. Nice and creamy. So let's go and fry some fish and chips. The fish is dredged in flour, dipped in batter, and then it goes for a swim in hot oil. This is about 375. Crisp up! <laughs> We're not done yet. It's not fish and chips without the chips. Oh, We're not at McDonald's down here. These are English chips. So they're cut a little bit thicker. Is size important? <laughs> yes. I think with fish and chips, you want them thin and crisp. It's uh, about half an inch square all the way around there. I know that proper English chips are thicker than regular fries, but hey, I'm an American and I gotta stick with what I know. We're cooking at 325 to 350, and this is gonna be about three, four minutes. By the time the fries are done, the fish should be just about ready. You want it to be a nice, even brown color. I always cook the fish by eye, because I know exactly how our fish is supposed to look like when it's cooked. I like to cook by ear. You want to hear that crunch? Yeah. It's got a good hard shell to it. OK, so there you go. That's the perfect fish and chips. We're going to serve that with uh, salt and vinegar and tartar sauce, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I heard Matt will be whipping up some of his special tartar sauce for his guest tomorrow. So Stephanie made some for our team. It's got mayo, capers, cornichons, anchovies, and reduced lemon juice. And you know I like my heat. So it's also got some habanero peppers. We're ready to dig in. It's not right. The batter needs to be lighter and crispier. I'm telling you, the yolks need to go home. It's a fat. It's a it softener. Makes it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to help develop the crispness. That's absolutely gorgeous looking. Mmm. This is absolutely fantastic. Cheers. I think so far we don't have it down. No. Nope. I have to say, one of the best things on this plate is the tartar sauce, so. I That's think we surprise. nailed that. <laughs> All right, Matt, we're down, but we're not out. We're going to keep frying away, and we'll be coming at you with our spicy habanero tartar sauce. I'm the chef down at Salt and Battery. The big day is here. 
and Matt is busy warming up the crowd at the Chelsea Brewing Company. So today we're going to be making um, little cob bites with uh, English style chips. We've got some tartar sauce, some coleslaw. He has no idea that there's something new on the menu. You know, we didn't have a lot of luck in our test kitchen. Yeah, I mean, my, my tartar sauce worked perfectly. Um, it was just I was okay. What I responsible for turned out. It was actually really just okay. I think it was Bobby who had the wrong. Well, now that we've our new secret, secret weapon, I think we have a good chance. Today we're going to be making a pint of tartar sauce. Okay, so first of all, we've got green pepper and a red pepper. A little wee onion. How you doing? I'm Bobby Flay. How you doing, mate? Nice to meet you. You Matt? Matt. The salt and battery. Yeah, that's me. I'm from the Food Network. I think I've seen you before. Yeah, have you? <laughs> Did you see me? I hear your fish and chips is the best in New York, and I'm here to challenge you to a fish and chips throwdown. Really? Yeah. Where do you want it? Well, you ready for it? Yep. All right, let's do it. Let's get him. Let's get him. How about you? I thought, who's this guy? And then I realized who we were when I turned around. 